The difference in temperatures and pressure between the poles and the equator create winds and currents, and the currents themselves, both on the surface and in the depths, play an important role regulating the climate. In Paita, in Peru, thanks to the currents from the depths that bring nutrients to the surface, the climate is the origin of life. And it's thanks to the Humboldt current in particular that Peru is the second largest fish producer in the world. In Paita, they mainly fish for porta, the giant squid. It will end up being exported as animal flour, frozen fritters or surimi mix, which is good news for the Paita fishermen. Here, everybody dreams of having a boat built or tries to go to sea. They dream of fish, always bigger than the last and of miraculous fishing. Victor Silva, the boat's captain, is about to leave. Just time to check that his team is ready to lift the anchor and his boat, the Empress Blanca Eugenia is ready to set out to take on the Pacific Ocean. Hi guys, how's it going? Victor and his men get back to the sea. There's no lifeboat to leave room for the squid and hearts filled with hope to forget that the fact they can't swim. Like everywhere in the world, the sea has its dangers. Once we went to fish for dolphin fish. We hadn't been gone for long when the boat started to take on water. We hadn't caught many fish and the wind was blowing quite strongly a bit like now, and the material got tangled. The water flooded the store and started to melt the ice. We didn't have enough left for the two remaining days of fishing. Also, the stand for the motor had broken. We were working below. The lines were in the water. We had a big problem. It's easy to do whatever I want and throw myself into the water to go looking for squid. But if God says there are no squid, then I can only keep looking for them until God says, now you can, and then I'll catch them. Men look for fish in the seas, appealing to the heavens. Providence is as old as fishing. In reality, it's the Humboldt current which decides if there will be fish in the region or not because the Humboldt, like all the maritime currents, carries with it billions of tiny living organisms, larvae, mini algae, bacteria, a whole collection that we call plankton and which nourishes the fish. As incredible as it sounds, these little organisms at the bottom of the marine food chain also play a considerable role in regulating the climate. To understand their exact function in the climate, the expedition boat Tara has been traveling the oceans for over 10 years and it currently has its sails set towards the southeast coast of Greenland. On board, Gabby Gorski, plankton specialist, is about to drop his manta net to take the first sample of the day. We take the GPS positions of the start and everything else to have all the necessary data to estimate the volume and the surface. So we let it all the way out, that's 80 metres, so it's behind the boat's wake. The manta net is lowered into the water. With its gaping mouth, it combs the top 20 centimetres of the surface. Microplankton, microalgae, everything that it goes through will be collected, then sampled. A half hour wait for the Holy Grail. With a sun that never sets in this period of the year and thanks to a high level of nutrients, the Arctic waters are rich. We don't have to wait long until Gabby's net finds a bloom of plankton, a spontaneous explosion of life. This phenomenon is so big that it can be seen from space. After half an hour, the net is lifted. Gabby will be able to classify and sample the plankton and so clarify its role in regulating the climate. This time, the collection seems to have been a great success. It's incredible, incredible, to do a daytime collection of surface plankton 
And to have this many, it's amazing. Usually we get just a little. Here there's five litres, and around a third is filled by little copods. We'll take a look with the microscope to see exactly what it is. A little gelatinous, but a huge quantity for the surface in the daytime. I've come to the conclusion that life is a miracle. When we look at physics, chemistry, biology, genomics, how has life progressed? How was life created? We need to be conscious that we're part of an ecosystem, part of the Earth, part of a planet. Each organism is an ecosystem. We are an ecosystem. On the other side of the world, off the coast of Peru, Victor and his men are on the bridge. There's something different in the air and the water that tells them that the porta, the giant squid, are nearby. The optimism is almost palpable. It's been a while since we found as many potters in this season. We didn't think there would be so many. They're usually further north, but they've been going further south for a while. This migration is a new symptom of climate change. As the planet gets warmer, the plankton migrate to colder waters, and with the plankton, the whole food chain moves towards the poles. Victor and his men are the outposts of a world that is changing. Their exclusive fishing zones and the laws that protected them yesterday will soon be null and void. The climate is rewriting fishing maps worldwide. Industrial fishing wants to take our place, a place that we artisans have struggled to earn. Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, they all want to fish here. They have the power. They've practically wiped out the sardine and the anchovy, and now they want to do the same to the potter. There are two possibilities. Either we fishermen sit up and take notice of this, and there'll be some left in the future. For that, we need to adopt quotas, be more disciplined, practice sustainable fishing. Or we do nothing, and in 15 years, there'll be no more pota. While waiting for a favourable outcome on the issue of industrial fishing, Victor's men still managed to get their first porter out of the water. And soon, the frequency of the catches confirms that a shoal of porter is naively dancing under the hull of the bridge. Long, retractable tentacles, which have powerful suckers to immobilise large prey, changing pigments that seem to reflect their mood and a mouth that's powerful enough to crush its victims in one go. This is Dosidicus gigas, the devil of the depths in person, as the fishermen like to call it, the Humboldt squid. On the Tara expedition boat, Gabi Gorski continues his mission. He's getting ready to inspect the plankton who are at the origin of the climate more closely. As small as they are, if the plankton suffer a stress related to the rise in temperature, the consequences could be fatal. And it seems that a last-minute guest could already be threatening this fragile balance. We have two specimens that are typical in these waters, the copods, the little grains of rice, and the amphipods with the big eyes. Unfortunately, there's also plastic floating on the surface, bits of plastic. Given that there has been life on this planet for, we think, nearly four billion years, plastic has only existed for 60 years. Yet we've managed to pollute all of the waters from the North to the South Pole, all the oceans, nearly all of the rivers everywhere. 
tous les océans, quasiment toutes les rivières. I sometimes tell students that it's not worth throwing away your plastic bags. Just add some seasoning and eat it directly. In any case, it will find its way back onto your plates. Already on the image, you can see the division and that will go back into the food chain up to the fish. We know that, but that's where I'm optimistic because I think everyone can understand that, including the politicians. And so make the effort to replace unnecessary plastic with biodegradable alternatives. We know that plastic is dangerous for the food chain and for our health. It is dangerous for the climate as well. By blocking the light or polluting the nutrients, plastic disrupts the development of plankton, jeopardizing the links that unite the sky, mankind and the sea. Victor Silva doesn't want to accept this sad analysis. Only just returned from his successful giant squid fishing, he's already left again, this time with his wife and daughter. He takes them to the Isla Foca, where they can find at least 54 species of fish, 32 species of mollusks, mammals, starfish and crustaceans. And plenty of plankton, of course. And then, away from prying eyes, they spot an unusual colony which they have to dock and climb up to observe. Go on, darling. A few sea lions are basking in the sunshine. They're the main competition for the fishermen as they also eat the giant squid. A few years ago, local fishermen killed thousands of them with their oars. But Victor disapproves and he has his reasons. We wanted to come here to show Bianca the diversity of marine wildlife. Here's special, two currents merge. And so there are sea lions, penguins, many different birds. It's the first time that she's seen all these animals. Few fishermen think like that. Most only consider their own interests. It's opportunism. I've been fishing for over 20 years and every day I see that the water temperature rises a little bit. I'd like my voice to be heard because we have to know the damage that man is doing to the sea and marine life. Species are disappearing. For example, there are no more sardines here. And in other parts of the world, like off the coast of Spain, there aren't as many fish as before. We need to wake up to this for our children, our grandchildren. That's my message. We have to wake up. The ocean is the climate's main regulator. Every living being depends on this fragile balance. Tomorrow's world depends on us waking up. <laughs>